This video will cover a definition of aggregation, as well as examples of aggregation. Aggregation is also referred to as a pivot table, group by statement, or summarize. Aggregation transforms data into lower dimensions using summing, averaging, and counting. The benefits of this are to answer basic questions of data sets with many different dimensions. The most basic aggregation can be done on the level of detail for the table. In this case, each row is a transaction, and the table as a whole represents sales for phones for quarter one of 2015. The answers can be calculated by applying a formula to a single field using all the rows in the table. How many units were sold? Nine. How much total revenue? $3,590. How many transactions? Six. How many distinct products were sold? Three. How many customers? Three. How many stores had sales? Four. What was the average price? $398.50. What was the average number of units sold per transaction? 1.5. What was the average amount spent per transaction? $598.33. What was the average amount spent per customer? $1,196.50. Pay special attention to how the average function works. It uses the sum of the field divided by the number of rows, so it can't be used in averages such as this, where the denominator is not the number of rows. The next questions are related to aggregating one dimension at a time and can be calculated in one step. For each of the questions, the original table is grouped by the dimension of interest, either the person ID, store ID, product ID, or date. For each value of the dimension chosen, calculations are performed using the measures, the number of rows, and the number of distinct IDs. A new data table is the result of these calculations. Notice that when grouping by a dimension, the dimension is sorted in the output. For this example, we'll aggregate at the person level of detail to answer the following questions. How many units did each person buy? How much money did each person spend? For each person ID, we need to calculate the sum of units sold and the sum of the total amount. Starting with person ID 1, we see that there were 1 plus 1 equals 2 units sold and 365 plus 425 equals $790 spent. These values are populated in the resulting table. Similar calculations are done for every person ID in the original table. Aggregating at the store level of detail can provide basic information about store performance. To find the number of transactions each store had, each occurrence of a store ID needs to be counted. Store ID 101 has two rows in the original table, indicating that there were two total transactions. Each store ID has its number of rows counted, and the final result is the num transactions column in the newly created table. Aggregating at the product level of detail can answer basic questions about each product, such as, what was the average price of each product? How many distinct customers bought each product? Starting with product ID 1001, Average price is calculated as the sum of the total amount, 1625, divided by the sum of units sold, 4. The final value of 40625 is populated into the resulting table. Again, be aware that using an average function in this case would not give us the expected result. Distinct customers is calculated by counting the distinct number of person IDs for product ID 1001. There are two, person ID 1 and person ID 2. The calculations are then completed for every product ID.
The final example uses the month and year components of the date field to calculate all possible levels of aggregation, which were shown on the previous slides. How many units were sold each month? How much revenue each month? How many transactions each month? What was the average price? How many distinct products were sold each month? The final type of questions that can be asked involve combinations of multiple dimensions. One of the most common combinations is to aggregate by a date dimension along with another dimension. For this calculation, each combination of the dimensions chosen for grouping are performed. In the transaction table, there are four such combinations. Transactions for person ID 1 are only in March of 2015. There's only one transaction for person ID 2, occurring in February 2015. And there are three transactions for person ID 4, two occurring in January, and one occurring in February of 2015. Within each of these combinations, each of the calculations are performed. Here we'll show you the first row as an example. Note that the more unique dimensions a data table contains, the more the number of possible levels of aggregations increases. In this example table, with four unique dimensions, there are 14 different possible levels of aggregation. Each different level of aggregation can offer a unique insight, but it's best to start with two or fewer levels. Example questions that can be answered using the example transaction data set include, which customers tend to buy which products? Which stores do customers tend to frequent? What products sell well in what stores? And during what months do they sell more on average? Here's one final example using multiple concepts that have been covered. Using the transaction fact table, we want to answer the question, which stores had products that were on sale? Answering this question is a multi-step process. The first step is to find the average price for each product. For this, we aggregate by product ID, and for each product ID, we calculate the average price. For example, product 1001 sold for $425 and $400. The average of these two values is calculated and then entered into the resulting table. Values for subsequent IDs are calculated in a similar manner. We also need to aggregate at the store and product level. This removes the customer and date level information, giving us the totals for each store and product combination. Due to the limitations of this example, the aggregation does not result in fewer rows as it normally would. The resulting table is, however, sorted by store ID and product ID. The next step is to join the product aggregate table to the store product aggregate table using product ID as the common field between the two tables. This results in a table with a similar structure as the store product aggregate table, with the only difference being the new column, average product price. We filter the resulting table to only include rows where price is less than average product price. There are only two rows where this is true. Finally, we join this table with the store dimension and product dimension tables. Adding store name and product name to the table is necessary to fully answer the original question. The resulting table makes it clear that the G2 went on sale at Best Buy and the S6 went on sale at HH Gregg. This example is a simplified illustration of how data preparation techniques are often used together to answer typical questions of the data. This concludes our video on aggregation. Today we covered a definition of aggregation and examples of aggregation.